Hello, welcome. My name is Festus. I promised that I was going to bring you uh, the title, The Radical Jesus. The Radical Jesus. So it's now. I'm bringing it now. It's going, it's going to be hot. Now, we are going to, I'm, I'm going to paint a picture of Jesus for you as it is painted in the Bible. You know, a lot of people don't really know the real portrait of Jesus. So if you want to see the real painting of Jesus, the real portrait of Jesus, eh? Please sit down. Sit down. Let me show you. Sit down. You see all those ones they are painting all over the place? You see a face of a woman, uh, 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 Jesus, so-called Jesus that has a woman's face, a woman's hair, and um, uh, painted lips. Mm -hmm. That is not the picture of Jesus. So that is the imagination of the medieval artists, the Italian Renaissance artists during the Catholic eras. That does not agree with the portrayal of Jesus that we find in scriptures. This video is important. After this video, the way you see Jesus will be different. Just sit down. It's, it's always a short video. Sit down. Let's dig into this thing. Let me show you the real portrait of Jesus that is found in the Bible. The real, the authentic portrait of Jesus. I'm going to show you live. Just, just watch this video to the end. Please click that a like, subscribe, and share. Be with us in this channel. You will never regret it. Let's go there now. You see, during the days of Jesus, um, this is about 2,000 years ago, even now, a lot of people didn't see his physical photo or physical appearance. But I, I'm an artist. If I'm going to paint a picture today physically with my brush and paint, I'm going to look at the portrayal of Jesus in scriptures. That will give me a very clear understanding of his personality. So in this message, I'm going to unveil the real portrayal, the real portrait and personality of Jesus. So that you, Christian, your mindset, your mentality about or the picture that you have about Jesus, that picture you have in your head. If you know original, what this message will do to it is that it will erase it. And then you will have the original picture, original description of Jesus that is found in scripture. Now let's go there. Um, all, all of us before now had always believed that Jesus is that gentle, easygoing uh, guy that preaches religion all over the place. He cannot even kill an ant. Is the that if that one you say if he slap if he slap you turn the other cheek, let them also slap again. So that's a picture you have of Jesus. And then you think, is that feminine look? That's why the artists of the Renaissance gave him a feminine look. Trying to create what they call idealism. You know, a feminine look. But it's not that feminine look. It has that masculine look. When I am true, you will see there will be a painting that the Holy Spirit will form in your mind concerning Jesus. Now, Jesus woke up one morning as usual. He worshipped in the general worship center, which is the synagogue where the Jews usually meet. Unfortunately, you know, beyond his expectation, he saw everywhere very jam-packed with activities of commerce, activities of buying and selling. You would have expected that, that that kind of Jesus would have just silently moved into the worship place and worship gently and live quietly. I don't want trouble, oh. I'm a Christian, no. Oh. I go on my own, no. Oh. <laughs> but to shock you what he did. He stood for a while. He looked at the 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 the, first, the, 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 the display of shenanigans by the so-called religious leaders and their followers buying and selling. 
Whereas in the Old Testament it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer. He picked up Cain. He picked up Cain. And he began to flog the religious leaders. This is not spiritual. This is not spiritual. These things are not figurative. Life! Hmm? He gave Baba Legba ni. Baba Legba gone. He flogged them. Hmm? Mercilessly. He flogged religious leaders and all those buying and selling his temple and drove them away. He not only drove them away, he used his leg and kicked away their, their merchandise, their market. Scatter it! If you were there that day, what would you have, what conclusion would you have made concerning him? You would have said, some would have said, He's very, very, very violent. He's on, on he's, he's on, he's, he, he's, an, he's, he's a man that does not consider others. <laughs> but that's the Jesus that we are talking about. That's the Jesus of the Bible. If Jesus was present today, he will flog some of the pastors in Nigeria. I'm not saying all of them. There are some that are buying and selling that have turned his church into merchandise. He will flog them live on a public television. Jesus did it that day. He was so afraid that the Pharisees and the Sadducees would attack him. He was not afraid of anybody. He did what he did and he left. And they, they, they challenged him. He provided them a scriptural evidence for what he did. He said, it is written, my house will be, should be called a house of prayer where people come to learn and receive solution to their problem. But you have turned it into a house of thieves and robbers. Compared to what happened that time and what is happening today, you can see some, some kind of resemblance. Let me take you again. We are painting the picture of Jesus so. You are hold, I'm holding a brush and a pencil and my color. By the time I'm through, you will see the full picture of Jesus. <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> there was a time, eh? The religious leaders of his time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we still have these people today. Who, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we still have them among right, religious leaders today. They are very much around. They said this Jesus has been a bone in our throat. What can we do to him? They now hired army. They now hired their police. You see the religious leaders today, and is it not the same thing they do? They are the police and the armies and their payroll. They are the one paying them to do their shoddy job. I pity those who follow this man to do their shoddy job. When judgment comes, will come upon you. It will come upon you. A law enforcement agent, you are supposed to be wise. He, they, they hired the Herodias, the, 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 the military regiment, to go and arrest Jesus at the place he was preaching. By the time the, the, these uh, uh, military guys came there, they, they, they waited the beat. They said, when it is time, we'll go and arrest him. We'll pick him from the crowd. But <coughs> they waited. 30 minutes turned to one hour. One hour turned to one and a half hour. One and a half hour turned to two hours. Ah, they, are, they are tapping them. Say, what are we still waiting? They don't want to say, what are we still waiting? Go and arrest him now. They don't say, no, I can't, I can't touch him. They don't want to say, go and arrest him now. No, I know, my power knows this idea. My power has not, would not, has not gotten to that. And then why did we come here? And we came to arrest him, but we can't arrest him. No man has preached like them. They returned back after a long time to report to the so-called religious leaders that sent them. Said, we couldn't arrest him. And the religious leaders got mad and said, are you also believing in him? Are you also his disciples? Then the armies defended themselves. They said, we have never seen anyone in this life that has the level of wisdom and knowledge to preach like this man before. And that's why that's how they could not touch Jesus. Are you getting the picture of Jesus now? You, you've seen the kind of radical Jesus that he is. Please follow me. <laughs> follow me. It's a short video. You see, there's another time again. The, the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders are always at the, are confronting Jesus. And even to today, the greatest problem Jesus had in his days 
was not the political leaders. He had problem with the religious leaders. And that is the same thing today. So they confronted him again. Said, uh, you always talk so much about yourself being a savior and being sent to the world and uh, talking about the past. Did you live in the past? Were you not uh, somebody born just yesterday? You are barely 30 years. Jesus replied. He said, even your father Abraham, before he was, before he was, I was. Before Abraham, I was. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days. And he was glad that he saw it. They became angry. They said, you are blaspheming now. When, well, how old are you that you are comparing your age and your time with Abraham? Abraham lived hundreds of years ago. You are just you're born yesterday. They were talking from gross ignorance. They did not know who was standing in their presence. They did not know Jesus. So Jesus mesmerized them with deep revelation that they could not fathom. Are you start, have you started to see Jesus now? And he moved on. He, Jesus was such a radical teacher that when he teaches, he expects that you, you should just follow and grab it. That was the time they brought uh, a, a child that was demon-possessed by a father who uh, took the child to the, the disciples of Jesus and said, please, uh, pray for this boy. Let him get well. The disciples could not pray. They could not cast out the demons. They could not do it. And the father, the father was struggling with them. And then Jesus saw what was happening. Called the father and said, come, what's the problem? My boy needs deliverance. Please pray for him. I took him to your disciples. They could not even do anything. Jesus looked at his disciples. You would have thought that he's just a gentle savior. And they would just pamper them. The very radical teacher. He look at them. It's a faithless people. Faithless generation. Faithless generation. If you were if you were there that day, you would have picked offense. You would have said, How can Pastor be insulting me? Your pastor even didn't say as much as that. But you got offended and left. Look at the kind of Christian you were. Jesus called the disciples faithless generation, not once, not twice. Faithless, hopeless, faithless human beings. If you were called that by your pastor, would you stay in the church? You would have left. Say, this man is just insulting us. Is it because we did for a church? That's the kind of Jesus we, we are talking about too. And you say it's your savior. Are you sure it's your, it's your savior indeed? Maybe you have not seen this painting before. <laughs> now, when you see this painting, you will decide whether it's your savior or not. You can see the kind of radical person he is. And he moved on. It's not about... In, in, I think in John chapter 7, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders, they start plotting to kill him. Does it surprise you that people who claim that they have religion, they claim piety, they always they still plot to kill someone? Is it not double standard? Do we not have something like that today? People who claim big religion, they, they, you see them, they wear religious regalia. Everybody is hailing them. They are the closest to God. Yet they have a heart to plot to kill someone who has not done them anything. Just out of jealousy. That will teach you something. That these men are false. When you plot to kill another. In spite, despite your religious regalia that you wear. And your religiosity. You don't see it as a crime to murder. You are evil. You are evil. And so they plotted to kill him John 7. And he, he, he didn't go. He initially didn't go, so they were waiting for him at the temple, at the worship place, so where God, where they, where, where they say God is, is, so where they are serving God, though, that's where they are plotting this evil. Oh, religious people, you never cease to amaze me. Your heart is dark. They were there plotting for him. Radical Jesus was at home. He didn't come exactly when they wanted him. Even if you read that passage, his brothers were telling him, "Go now." Today is a special feast. 
The people will be waiting for you to hear from you. I know you are a radical teacher. Go. Jesus said, my time has not come. Go and read the Bible. You see, when you follow this channel, you, the Bible comes alive to you. It's no longer a literature book. It becomes a real experience. Jesus waited when they had waited and became tired of waiting. They concluded he wasn't coming to the temple today. He wasn't coming because it was a special feast today. Unknown, unbeknownst to them, the Lord, the radical Jesus appeared. Gagangam. The common people have been waiting. The people that so love him and wanted to see him. A lot of them came that day of the feast because of him, to hear him. Because he often come to the tabana, to the temple and he would climb the podium to preach. They were waiting. Immediately they, they see when he's, he walked in silently. They said, look at him. Others said, no, no, be him. It's not him. How could he come when they are plotting to kill him? There was an argument. It's him. It's not him. It's him. It's not him. Suddenly, he climbed the podium and he began to preach. In front of all the so-called religious people who wanted to kill him, they were looking at him. They could not do anything. They said, Is he not the man we are plotting and waiting for since morning? Preaching powerfully and, and even vehemently, even preaching about us. Uh, how come this guy is always bold? Somebody that wanted to kill, look at him now. He's on the podium, preaching. What can we do? That's what they said. They said, we can't do anything. You can see the crowd are always hailing him and they seem to love him. If you touch him now, the, this crowd you see, the crowds are very terrible thing to toy with. They will stone you to death. The religious people feared the people. The religious uh, leaders feared the people. But they don't fear God. Today, it seems as if our politicians fear the crowd. But they don't fear God. They fear demonstration. Crowd coming en masse. Look at what happened in Kenya. They fear that. But they don't fear God. Do you know why they did not lay hands on Jesus that day? Because they saw that the crowd seemed to be on his side. They said, if we touch Jesus, <laughs> Yahweh go gasso. These people will lynch us to death because they believe he is a great leader that God has sent. That's why they spared him that day. <laughs> Radical Jesus. If they joke with him, follow me. I'll soon end this video. It's not a long video. You see, there's another term. There's another term. Jesus confronted them in preaching. When he was preaching, they, they, they came and confronted Jesus trying to gainsay and um, thwart his message. Jesus looked at them and said, you are of your, if it, Jesus is that radical preacher that will tell you the thing the way it is, he will not paint it. Jesus is not the preacher that paints things. He will tell you point blank to your face. He looked at them. And he said, you are of your father, the devil. Do you know whom he was talking to? Big religious leaders. Some of them have, some of them have their foothold in government. He spoke to them, not on at the back, oh, not on the TV, oh, live, face to face. He looked at them, he said, you are of your father, the devil. It is the work of your father, the devil, that you are doing. Your father, the devil, was a liar from the beginning. And it is his work he does. He's a murderer. I did not do you anything. And you seek to kill me. And that was what your father, the devil, did from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. All the scriptures are here now. Now, anybody who preaches like this, is he a gentle preacher? I'm asking you. Anybody that preaches like this, is he a jelenke? Is he going? He cannot kill an aunt, sanctimonious, is he going, pastor? <laughs> now you are beginning to have the better understanding of the Jesus we are talking about. Abi, thank God for that. That is the Jesus of the Bible, I'm showing you. He did not joke with unrighteousness, he did not compromise with those who did evil. He spoke the truth and spoke as and spoke it loudly for everybody to hear. If whatever you want to say, say. 
That was the zone. Follow me. I'll soon end this. This painting and painting, this particular picture and painting will soon be true. Or I just put in the finishing touches. When I'm through, I'll show you the picture. Very powerful, descriptive portrait of Jesus. But I called it a radical Jesus. You see, so, even with all of this radicalism, it was still full of love, compassion, empathy. Oh, what a man of God. What a savior. What a Lord. If I were you, this is the kind of person that I would like to follow. Even if there is another opportunity to come to this world, I will still follow him. Full of love. At the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus wept. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, full of love and empathy, concern for people. The Bible says a crowd of more than 5,000 gathered around him for almost the whole day. And he looked at them and they were looking like sheep without shepherd. And he had compassion on them and healed their sick and provided for their needs. He fed them as well. How many people are like this Jesus? How many preachers today are like this Jesus? Instead of giving to the, uh, to the crowd, they collect and collect and collect from the poor. The word they have is not enough for them. They live in plenty and wealth, but the poor continue to languish in abject poverty. It doesn't move them. How many people are like Jesus? How many did Jesus collect? Jesus was always giving. He wasn't even collecting. The only thing he collected was what people gave willingly, that he did not use gimmicks. Go and read my books. My book on prospective gospel and the gimmicks. If you're a Christian, you haven't read that book. You have not read anything. It's on Amazon. Prosperity gospel and the gimmicks, the tricks, the falsity behind it. Go and read it. I gave you, in that book, I made a thorough research of the history of the prosperity gospel and all the key actors in it today. I, you know I don't write nonsense now. Our books are not just I sit to AI and tell AI to, to give me this. I'll pass that level. AI can write what God has given to me. In fact, what some of the things I have, if I put it to AI, it will reject it. It will say they, they are non-existent. <laughs> so you see, our books are carefully written. They are inspired. Go get them. They are not AI products. They are products born from experience and, uh, and revelation. Go get them. Jesus gave to the people. That's the Jesus I'm painting. Compassionate, empathetic, loving, Yes. Loving. And at the end of the day, he gave himself. He said, instead of these people to die, let me die for them. He died and took the pain. And on the cross, when he should have been cursing and revenging, like some men of God are doing today, say, I'm going to revenge. Jesus has not ta taught me to turn the other cheek. He has taught me that anybody that slapped me here, I will slap back hundred times. If you do me anything, I will do you back. I didn't like Jesus. But Jesus prayed on the cross while the sinners have nailed him. He said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Because they do not know what they are doing. Look at Jesus. So radical, yet full of compassion, full of love, full of concern, praying for the sinners. At a point, when he was in a village to preach, they, they, I think in the village of the Samaritans, because the Samaritans don't have any dealings with the Jews, they began to tell him insultive words and asked him to leave. If Jesus was a kind of prophet, he would have called, he would have sent his disciples to massacre them. Read through the scripture, there is nobody Jesus massacred. There's no account that Jesus led his disciples to go and fight. No account that anybody died on his on, on, on the course of religious difference. Do you know what Jesus said? The apostles were asking Jesus to send down fire like Elijah to consume the entire village. Imagine. Imagine. 
religion and violence put together, they are not the same. Jesus looked at them, radical Jesus. You see, see, my radicality is balanced. That's what he told them, in essence. You see, my radicality is not that wickedness. I'm radical, but I'm not wicked. He said, you want to kill an entire village because of religious difference? You are mad. You want, you want me to call fire to consume them? You don't know the spirit you have. That's what Jesus told them. And that's what Jesus said, please, let's live quietly. Let's leave this village quietly. How many religious founders can do this? I know some religious, some religious founders or religious fanatics that would have called massacre for that village because of religious difference or because we insulted their leader. They would say, kill everybody. How do you compare murder, violence, and faith and put them together? Do they don't match? Radical Jesus, but compassionate, reasonable, empathetic, and has the milk of human kindness. That's the Jesus I want to follow till I die. Till I die. I'm ending it. That is it. That is the message. If I have a time, I'll come with the second video. I know you've been blessed. Thank you. Please like and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. I'm Henry. That's my other name. I'm Penko Festus. That is my online name. God bless you.